Right since the time we human thought of settling down, the most common question most of us have always asked ourselves is what should I become in life? Yes, career planning is always on the mind of young and their parents all the time. Huge amount of efforts and time is spent in defining and achieving one's career goals and objectives of life. Good day friends. I am Shekhar, co-founder of Career and Paths and you are watching the Career Channel. Abraham Lincoln had once said that if you want to predict your future most accurately, you must create it yourself. Only then your prediction can be accurate. But on a lighter note, let us try to understand what is a career. It is nothing but a long winding road, but a road that leads to a destination that you are not even sure you want to get to, but you still keep driving. You still keep spending your own money with the only hope that the view at the destination is going to be great. It's just that particular hope. But seriously, what is career journey all about? A career is a journey. It is a person's journey throughout their academic and working life. It includes your education, all the training that you acquired and all the experiences that you have gained in various jobs and professions that you have followed or pursued in your life. So when a person is talking about career, a person is ultimately talking about a set of goals or objectives that they have set for themselves. Now, what are these objectives? If you broadly think, these objectives are of two types. Now, on one hand, we can talk about these objectives as set of materialistic goals. And what are these? These include financial prosperity, these include fame, social recognition, money, wealth, and so on and so forth. And on the other side, or on the other hand, there are non-materialistic goals. Now, what are these goals? They include things like satisfaction, include things like happiness, fulfillment, social influence, or simply gaining respect from people. So there are materialistic goals, and then there are non-materialistic goals. And what is career? is all about charting a pathway towards these goals, but within the framework of your personal limitations that you have set up for yourself or which you have acquired as a set of limitations. Now that is all what career planning is all about. Let's take a look at it from a different angle. You can think of it as a triangle based pyramid. You know, it's a pyramid which, which is going towards the top, but with a triangular base. Now, this base is made up of three, three sides. Now, at Career and Paths, we call it as the Holy Trinity of Career. And why do we say so? It's very important. Just try to understand this. Now, the first side of that particular triangle is the personality and traits, which, which is something that you're born with, or which is called as innate skills, or what you acquired on the way. The second side of this particular triangle is a knowledge that you have gained typically through a formal or informal education. It could be both. And then the third side of that particular triangle is the skills that you acquired at any given point of time. Now, we all have studied geometry. We know that if the sides are bigger and wider, the area of that particular triangle is going to be bigger, which means the more knowledge, skills, and personality I have, I have a bigger scope of pursuing different career objectives. However, there is nothing like an infinite set of possibilities. It's all going to be finite. So your set and goals are the objectives or are at the top of this particular pyramid, which is where you want to drive. Now, what drives you towards these goals are the objectives that you have set for yourself and then the expectations that you have from your objectives. Now, what limits that height of that particular pyramid is the limitations. And what are these limitations? These are your efforts, your determination, your focus. And at the side effect of it is what you gain, which is the experience and maturity 
of that particular triangle. So this is what that triangle-based pyramid that we are talking about. Now, it itself is divided into sections. The bottommost section is what we call as a discovery phase, which is based on that holy trinity that we just talked about, personality, knowledge, and skill. And that will help you find the best professions that will work for you within those constraints. Then the next step after discovery is a consolidation phase. What happens in that phase is you are now focused on a smaller set of objectives. You're tuning your knowledge, you're tuning your skills to go towards your ultimate objective that you have set for yourself. And that is where you consolidate, you narrow down on set of possibilities. And the third thing is an attainment phase where you hopefully have achieved what you have set up as goals for yourself. So that's, that's really the pyramid all about. So when you're planning your career, it is important to understand all these facets of this pyramid and work on all sides of that particular pyramid, you know, the, the base, the sides of it, and so on and so forth, so that your career journey remains focused, it remains glued to the objectives that you have set for yourself and um, uh, for yourself. Now, let's start taking a look at the base of the triangle. So the very first step in the career planning is to understand what are the core objectives that you're trying to achieve for yourself. We all saw that that was that topmost point that you're trying to shoot at. Now, it is okay to select a role model or a set of role models to get inspired by the goals that they have achieved or they are working towards achieving that particular goal. It is important to remember though that your goals need to be your goals and not somebody else's. And it is important that before you embark on the career journey, you put it down honestly on a set of a paper and you don't need to be worried about it. You don't need to compare it to somebody else's goal because these are your goals, they're unique to you. Now these goals and objectives should finally give you the joy and happiness as both these things are key drivers when you are going towards your career journey and they are going to help you remain focused to the ups and downs of the career journey. It is important to understand that there will be downs in your career journey and simply the joy and happiness of this pursuit is the only thing that is going to keep you going, especially when you are hitting the troughs of your career. Now, the second step is to come down towards the base of that pyramid. And then the first thing that you do on the first side you need to work on is to understand the personality and traits that you have in you. And now just to underscore that, I'm going to tell you a little story which is narrated in a famous book called Acres of Diamond. Now, you see, there is once a farmer who is somewhere close to Africa, who works on the farm that he has inherited, and he tills to make living out of that particular farm. Now, suddenly he starts hearing this news about discovery of diamonds in nearby regions and thinks, that's maybe, that's the easiest way to make money and why am I tilling in the land that I have? So what does he do? He sells off his land and starts traveling in pursuit of these coveted diamonds. He spends years in trying to find diamonds. He finds none. He runs out of the money and ultimately dejected, terminates his life. But friends, the irony doesn't end here. One day, a person who has brought this farm with him is walking past the stream in that very farm and he sees something which is glittering. He picks it up and puts it in his house, not knowing what he has discovered. A friend of his who understands diamonds, he comes, sees that and tells him what he has found is a diamond. He's amazed because there are many such diamonds which are littering the stream that is there in his farm. And what the person has just discovered is a big diamond field in the region. Now, why am I telling this story? Or what is the moral of it? Every one of us is bestowed with an acre of diamond of your own. It is important to discover these diamonds and leverage those rather than going after somebody else's diamonds. 
and you find your own acres of diamond. Friends, your personality, your straight traits, your strengths and your innate abilities are your diamonds. Before you do anything, please, please, please make a sincere attempt to discover these diamonds. Now, fortunately, there are techniques which are there right now, which are kind of scientific techniques which are going to help you determine the traits and personalities that are in you. These traits and personalities are also often referred to as multiple intelligences of a person. Now, it can be done through several techniques. Uh, two of the techniques that I know about is one called as a DMIT or Dermatoglyphic Multiple Intelligence Test, which is based on a technique of analyzing your fingerprints to determine your multiple intelligences. And you can find all about it on Career and Paths. Or you can also sit through a technique which is undergoing psychometric test. Now these tests are not like the usual test that we do. There's nothing right and wrong there. They're just trying to assess your personality. Now these tests are typically run for a few hours and they determine your multiple intelligences, personality and traits. So a couple of things are discovered from a single test. Now these tests are almost always followed with a session with a counselor who can help you understand and interpret the results of this test for you. The outcome of these tests is to usually narrow down on a set of profession or educational programs that are best suited for your multiple intelligences, your traits and your personality. So then the next question that you will have in mind is where do I find such people in the geography that you are living with? Of course you can Google, but tools like career and path is built with a sole objective of helping you throughout your career journey or throughout that coveted pyramid of career journey. And you can discover such people, these tests on career and paths very easily because we have associated with a set of consultants which are close to your geography and we have created what is called as a mentored career planning scheme which includes a test, which includes counseling and which will then ensure regular follow-ups after the counseling for a set of period because you need to follow up on what is going to be set as goals for you. Now, so we have understood our objectives, we have found out the, the personality or the traits. It is now important to focus on the other two sides of that particular triangle, right? And what are these other two sides which are, of, which are of that particular triangle is then to find out what are the best professions that are going to fit within your personality or traits. Now, it's very important to understand that the professions that you have chosen must align with the traits and objectives that are in you. It is important that you arrive at a set of potential professions and not just a single profession. And obviously the reason is maybe somewhere on the way you may not feel out that you are cut out for that profession or you may not like it. And then it, it is important to know what is a set that I'm working after. Now, once you're shortlisted, three or four such professions, it is highly advisable to discuss your plan choices with mentors. Now, what are the mentors? Now, these are people in the same profession or they're moving towards that particular profession or goal so that they can give you valuable insights into that particular profession or goal. And now, why is that important? It may sound a bit weird to you, but it is essential that when you choose a profession, you must understand the pitfalls, the challenges and problems of the profession more than the, the green side of that particular profession. So let's take an example. If you're going towards a profession in hospitality industry, first understand the challenges. There is going to be shift work. There are going to be long working hours and there is going to be lack of certainty of shift schedule. Now, how can you really succeed in a particular field if you do not have inclination to take on the challenges of that specific field? And every field has its own sets of challenges. 
don't get lured away by just the green side of it. Now, when we met a mentor, when we're planning a career for our son who chose it, that he wanted to follow it in hospitality industry, the very first question or statement, a very blunt statement made by the mentor that whom we talked to speak with, she said that, look, look beyond the glamour of this particular thing because you are the provider of the glamour and not the recipient of it. The second thing she asked is, are you prepared to work in weird shifts? Are you prepared to work on the weekends where everybody is enjoying? And are you prepared to work at, around the festivals where everybody is enjoying too? And are you cut to handle the stress and things which come up packaged with that particular work? If you are cut out, then that's a profession which is good for you. So mentors make you make an informed and an experience-based decision whether your choices or whether your career goals and professions are aligned to your aspirations and they fit in the circumstances which are there around you. Now, you can use career and paths to connect with such mentors and friends who can guide you towards a specific career goal. So where are we now? Okay, We have now determined a dream set of professions. We have narrowed down on a few set of professions that are most likely to fit my persona, that are going to meet my objectives. Now it's the time that we go back to the pyramid that where we started for, right? We started with this uh, triangle-based pyramid with the objectives on the top. Now the triangle, we only looked at one side of it. Now it's the time to look at the other two sides of that particular triangle. And what are these? Personality was one of them. The second one now is a knowledge. And that is essentially obtained when you are trying to obtain an educational qualification that you are trying to pursue towards your career objective. And then the second side or the third side of that particular triangle is the skills that are required for that particular profession. Now, we all know about educational qualifications. We are, there's an overdose of it. Uh, what are these? These are the certifications. These are the diplomas. These are the undergraduate programs. These are the graduate programs that we all enroll in with the hope that it equips us with appropriate knowledge base for us to set up and start our career journey on a very sound foundation. Remember, we are talking about the bottom of that particular pyramid with three sides. Now, along with educational qualifications, the other most important things are the skills that you acquire on the way. Why is that important? Skills will equip you with the right tools and techniques and also ability to grow in your profession. So now we have figured out the three sides of a particular triangle. We know that there is a personality side of it, there is a knowledge side of it, and there is a skill side of it. Now it's time to deep dive onto the knowledge side of that particular triangle. What is knowledge all about? So the knowledge tree, as all we talk about, is typically a set of knowledge clusters. Okay. Now, what is a knowledge cluster? These are a set of educational programs which are closer to each other. They are bunched against each other because they are probably targeting specific set of professions like medicine and other things or they are targeted towards gaining a knowledge in a particular sphere of, of, of the knowledge tree. Right? And again, the same example could be medicine, science, engineering and so on and so forth. Now, these knowledge clusters, there are roughly eight clusters of knowledge. The first one is education, which is all about give, providing the ability to teach others uh, and impart knowledge on other people. The second one is humanities and arts, which is talking all about humanities, obviously, and the field of arts itself. And then the social sciences, commerce, business and law, that's a third cluster. Science, which is a fourth cluster, which includes all the science, material, uh, science, physical science, and so on and so forth. The engineering and architecture clubbed again under a single single uh, cluster. Uh, then there's agriculture. That's a big thing which is coming up now. Uh, health and welfare, uh, including things like uh, medicine, pharmacology, and so on and so forth. And then services. So these are the eight different clusters. And uh, don't worry about it. We are going to do a deep dive in subsequent videos in each of this cluster and try to understand what each cluster can provide us in terms of professions, in terms of knowledge, in terms of skills, so that we can build our life, uh, our career journey on top of that. 
So where are we now? So we have reached a stage where we have access to ourselves, right? We, we understand what is a personality. Uh, we are very clear about the objectives that we have set up for ourselves. We have a potential list of professions that are fitting within my expectations, uh, within my set of circumstances uh, that I'm bound by. Okay? We have also discovered the educational qualifications that are giving us the right knowledge base. And we have also narrowed down on a profession. We have also spoken to mentors. Right. So we have all figured it out now. Uh, it's all done and it's party time. We are all done. Things are going to just figure it out for themselves. Right. No, we can't be any farther than truth. If we think of it that way, we have barely scratched the surface of the career pyramid or the career journey. We have just discovered what is required for us and we are trying to simply uh, understand what will work for us. Another important thing which is required for that is a plan. Where is the plan? How am I going to get to this destination? What are the milestones which are there on the way? Which institutes am I going to go to to acquire the knowledge? What is going to fit in my budget? What are the geographical limits that I'm bound by? You see, there are questions, questions, questions and more questions. Who has the answers? What are these answers? So career, creation of a plan is complicated. And that is precisely most of us do not make a plan. Plan makes us think. It makes us aware of some most uncomfortable question. It makes us aware of the risks and challenges which are on the way towards your coveted goal. So, what do most of us do? We simply don't plan. But friends, failing to plan is same as planning to fail. Having no plan is a sure short way to fail. Now, what makes planning complicated is really the options, the possibilities and the choices that you need to make on the way. Just take an example. If you want to make a career in supply chain management and you decide that you want to pursue an MBA in supply chain management to get there, are you aware that there are over one lakh, I'm not kidding, one lakh permutations and combinations to get to just that particular MBA and just in India? Why is that so? There are 1,050 universities in India, MBA is an eligibility has a bachelor in any discipline as its eligibility. Now, bachelor's degree itself from any university, you can have multiple permutations and combinations. I can do my HSC from state board, from NEOS, and, and the numbers multiply to a mind boggling number. Now, finding what will fit within your constraints of budget, geofencing and other things will help you to pursue your career goal, that is just like finding a proverbial needle in a haystack. But tools like career and paths help you generate these things at a click of button. And the beauty of it is you can further narrow down based upon the set of budgetary restrictions that you have, set of geological, geophysical limits that you want to pursue, and the path will be modified to, to suit you. Right? It's important that you have more than a single path to manage the risks that you are taking when you are moving on to your career journey. So at this time, where are we? We have uh, set up a high level plan um, and we have, for example, set up the milestones. It is now important to set goals at each level of the milestones of this particular path. Now, why is this important? Goal setting can be done in consultation with a mentor or a buddy. One important thing about goals is they need to be smart goals. What do, you, what do I mean by smart? They have to be specific, they have to be measurable, they have to be achievable, they have to be relevant, and they have to be town-bound goals. For example, if you want to achieve, say, a goal of mastering presentation skills as it is needed for your profession that you are targeted. Now, that makes the goal a relevant goal, right? You're not trying to pursue something which is not relevant to you. 
Now, you could set a goal that I will achieve this in the first year of my undergraduate program. Now, this is a good goal. Because it is relevant, we know that it is required for your profession. It is time bound. You have set up a time limit for that. It is achievable. And most importantly, you can now set up monthly measurements to see whether you are working towards that particular goal. And on tools like Career and Path, you could find also the coaching programs, the resources, the clubs or associations, the events, the mentors, the groups, which is going to help you achieve towards your goal. Because you see, achieving a goal has to work on all of these aspects to move towards it. Right? So it's important to use tools like Career and Paths for that. Now, let us come back to that pyramid that we started from, uh, which is a career, uh, career pyramid with a, a, a triangular base and objectives have at the top. Now, we have been talking about the base of the pyramid and we have talk, spoken about the personality and traits. We have spoken about the knowledge side of the triangular uh, base. Now, there is a third side to it. Now, we still need to work on developing the personality because it needs to be developed further and also on acquiring the skills which are needed for the profession that we are planning to pursue. Yes, skills can be developed and that acquisition can happen in multiple ways. Let's run an example. If you want to build a skill of teamwork, which is what everybody talks about all the time, of course, you can read about it. But acquiring a skill is not just reading about it. It is about practicing it. Practicing it every single day over and over and over again. So for that, say you will need to join a club or association or a group which will help you develop these team activities. But do you realize this can also be done by pursuing the right sport that can build a skill in you? And the bonus is you also get a relief from the stress that you have built in from following up your academic pursuits. The value of sports is significant when you are on the path to your career goals. Sports not only develops the discipline, it develops the team working skills, it develops the leadership skills, it develops ethics, it develops interpersonal skills, it develops physical skills, but it also contributes significantly towards your career goals by improving your mental health and also building in a network of contacts which become invaluable in the later part of your career. Sports can also help you build a very strong mind. Important lessons on how to handle failure can be learned through participation in sports. Now, you may be wondering, what am I talking about? Uh, why is that? You see, in sports, you don't win every single day and every single time. So, the lessons learned from sports are invaluable in building an attitude to handle failure and the ability that bouncing back from every setback can be obtained when you are pursuing a sport. Similar to sports, there is also pursuit of hobbies and interests, which is equally important when you're trying to build a career. You see, hobbies and interests help you develop transferable skills on one hand, but also develops a personal brand of your own. Likewise, they also contribute significantly to expanding your network of contacts and most importantly, enhancing creativity and innovation which everybody demands of you nowadays. Now, all of these things can contribute significantly towards your career goals. Career and path help you identify the hobbies and interests that match your career goals and also incorporate them in your personal life by participating in events, by participating in competitions, by getting associated with the right clubs, by getting associated in the right groups, uh, by understanding what other people are doing. It helps you incorporate that in your life. So what we've spoken a lot about today, up till now, is an approach to career planning and what steps to take to build your career plan. But friends, these are just the plans. We all know that achieving a success 
it's only about 10% inspiration and 90% perspiration. It's a time to act on these approaches that we have just set for ourselves. We at Career and Paths have made it our mission to help everyone to discover, plan, and achieve your career goals. How do we do it? We systematically work on all sides of this career pyramid. We have this ecosystem to get you in touch with mentors and coaches, participate in competitions and other things. You could simply begin your action and take the action by registering on Career and Paths. Career and Paths is free for you for your life. It will be the greatest tool and a buddy for you in pursuit of your goals. All you need to do is pick up your mobile phone and at the end of this video, there's going to be a QR code. Just scan it. It will take you to register on Career and Path. Remember, it's free and it takes a few minutes. And once you register, you can use this to dream, discover and achieve your career goals. Now, we have spoken a lot and covered a lot today. We'll be making more such informational videos uh, over time. We wish you all the very best in pursuit of your career goals. If you liked what you saw today, please share, like, and subscribe to our career channel. Till the time we meet again, take care, have lots of fun, and have a great, great day. Thank you.